Leon, if you don't just want to reveal your mental state but transform it, how can story writing help? Journaling, freeform writing, and writing poetry are all some of the things you can do to help your mental state. They will get ideas down on paper. You can put them aside, revisit them, learn something from them. But writing stories, particularly if you dig into the hidden power of story that lies beneath the words, that can truly help you transform yourself. The power of story is embodied within us. And so what is the connection between writing stories then and structuring our thoughts and reflections? So there is a secret code to story. There are patterns that story follows. And these patterns can be mapped with very simple visually intuitive symbols. Two of these are the backward barb and the forward barb. I describe them in my book, Story and Structure, a complete guide. Let me tell you about the two main ones. Any story starts out with a character, a who, when, where, in a particular position, in a particular situation. They encounter a problem, that's a backward barb, an eh, tension. In order to solve the problem, they need to get to some kind of solution to their problem. And they go on a journey that, ah, forward drive of story. Those moves lead them very often to a meeting with a friend or helper. That meeting is an increase of tension, so they go eh, like a train slowing down, the brakes slamming on before it can stop at the station. And once that conversation has happened, once the character and the friend or helper have done the exchange, their friend or helper might have given them a bit of advice. They might have given them a magical gift. They can go on the journey and, ah, the story can flow forward again until they meet the animal hindrance that stands in their way of solving their problem. They defeat it. They can be set back. It can go on a try, try, try again. But once they defeat that problem and solve their, sorry, once they defeat the animal hindrance and solve the problem, then the story can come to a close. That simple pattern of eh, ah, eh, ah, eh, ah, is a really simple pattern you can use to shape the structure of a story you tell about any character in any time, in any place, with any problem they want to solve. And so how do write, how could writers out there apply this to their own writing practice? Imagine you draw a little pattern at the top of your page, which has a backward barb, a forward barb, repeated three times. So it goes, e -a, e -a, e -a. that's problem, journey, meeting with friend or helper, meeting with enemy or hindrance. There you have a visually intuitive map to show you the structure of your story. You can write it in any style about any character and flow with it. You can cross out each symbol to make sure that you've got the elements you need to tell the story. You can add detail on the way, but those are the basic things you need for the story to work. In doing so, you will have to come to a point in the story where the character you're writing about meets a friend or helper. By definition, that will give you a solution to the problem, or it will lead you towards it. By using this structure, you're invoking your own inner helper. Your inner helper comes with good advice, common sense, and intuitive ideas that you would not necessarily have access without that. But don't stop there. You could use a different structure, a voyage and return structure, the kind of structure that Dorothy uses in her storyline when she goes on her adventure and gets derailed by a tornado taken to the land of Oz, or Sinbad, the sailor, from the tales of the Arabian Nights. He wants to go on a trade journey, is derailed by a storm, ends up shipwrecked on a deficit island, has to find his way back, 
when he does, he can solve the problem that he faced it at the beginning. While the quest structure helps solve problems, the voyage and return structure allows for unusual stories. And it's all about sharing those stories, going through that uncertainty, knowing you can find your way back home and telling the story at the end. And could you give us an example? Yes, sure. Let me take a real life example from this morning. I ran out of milk. I like milk in my coffee. So I went to the store to get some. When I arrived at the store, I found I'd forgotten my wallet. So I had to come home, go out again. By the time I got to the store, they'd run out of milk. So I had to go to another store. When I got there, I was able to exchange money for milk. A milk and honey situation happened. I came back home, was able to have coffee with milk. Yay, problem solved. Let me retell you that story in a voyage and return structure. I've run out of milk. I go to the shop. I find I've forgotten my wallet. I come back home. I go back again. The shop's run out of milk. On my way to the next shop, I'm derailed by a purple bull that flicks me over their back and I end up in ancient Sparta. I find myself in a bull vaulting training ground and I have to train to be the bull vaulting champion because if and when I do, I can ask for a boon that will transport me back to my own time and place where I can get the milk for my coffee that I need. Things happen. I get to the championship place, the boon is granted, and I get back to where I belong. I'm there in front of the uh, store. I go in, get my milk. The milk and money exchange happens. I get into a milk and honey situation. I go back home and I'm dying to tell the story to someone. I sit down with a nice hot cup of coffee with milk in it and realize that really what life is about is bull vaulting, facing the danger and overcoming it. Yes. And uh, do you think everyone with mental health concerns then should try writing stories in this way? Why not? Stories emerge from within us. They're embodied within us. We've been telling stories way before we started writing them down. They emerge from consciousness. I believe story structures exist because we encounter different kinds of problems. And the 18 story structures I describe in my book, Story and Structure, A Complete Guide, show the connection between the story structures and the different kinds of problems they are designed to solve. This is natural, but nobody's revealed this before now. Nobody's seen that connection. If you have a handle on this secret code of story and how it works, that connection between story structure and problem, you're well equipped to use the appropriate story structure to um, tackle whatever particular problem you're facing. So why not write stories, but why not use story structure to guide the process? And um, do you have any final tips on, on using story structure that you would um, say to writers? Yes, and I won't limit it to writers. Why not apply story structure in any creative activity? Imagine you're doing art therapy. You can use story structure, the voyage and return structure I'm thinking about, to plan ahead in order to cope with stresses of life. Plan ahead, get a small glass of water ready. You do your picture and you plan that at some point during that process, you're going to take that glass of water and throw it all over your beautiful artwork. And you're going to have to find a way of getting back home, of restoring balance. By planning that process from the start, yes, you're going to have to face uncertainty and whatever happens to the water, we don't know what's going to happen. 
but you're also going to be faced with the need to come up with creative solutions to restore balance, to find a way of getting back home. And that's a way you can use story structure, not just in writing, but in other aspects of your therapeutic activities as well.